that's a very short story about music, which I kind of um, wrote originally as a kind of um, story for reading aloud. I'm not going to be able to find this now. Um, and um, I'm going to read you another story I wrote quite a few years ago, actually, probably about sort of 12 years ago, um, which um, I've had reason to kind of revisit recently. Um, which is kind of a story for children, really. Again, it was sort of written with the intention of being something to read aloud, to perform. Um, but it's, a, it's kind of a story for children, or at least ostensibly so. Um, and I'm not sure really it needs any explanation at all, so I'll just read it to you. The story is called, He Never Writes to Me No More. He never writes to me no more, she says. How can he write to you when he's been dead for 50 years, I say. Then she cries a bit. After a while, she brightens up and says, He never writes to me no more. And I say, How can he write to you when he's been dead for 50 years? And she cries again. Grandma, I say, Korea was a long time ago. Grandpa was a long time ago. We've got iPods now, and texting, so you don't need letters. Oh, she says. And she's quiet for a bit. The clock tick-tock ticks in the corner, and I think about the door and tonight's telly. To be honest, this place frightens me. It smells. Down the corridor, someone else's grandma is screaming that goblins are using her toothbrush. He never writes to me no more. Grandma, I sigh. My mum says that Grandma's got a disease called Alzheimer's, which makes her forget things. She says it gives her a kind of amnesia, if you know what that is. She says she can't cope with it anymore, because Grandma keeps forgetting that Grandpa's long dead. We keep having to remind her, and it's news all over again. And then she cries for him, and forgets again, and wonders where he is. It's like... Grandpa's dying over and over in her head every few minutes. But really, he died millions of years ago. There was a war in a country called Korea. He was on America's side. He died when they were attacked at Yalu River on the 25th of October, 1950. I know all about it, you see, I looked it up. Grandpa died of drowning, they reckoned, and they didn't find his body. One day, his letters to Grandma just stopped. He never writes to me no more. Grandma says this and cries, and for the umpteenth time shows me the bundle of brown letters she keeps in a biscuit tin in the corner. Funny, but she never forgets why that is. Personally, I'd prefer it if the letters were biscuits. That's what normal grandmas would give me. Normal grandmas would pat me on the head, say, Oh, you've grown, and give me grandma kind of biscuits like rich tea or digestives or something. And perhaps a few quid. But no, not my Alzheimer's grandma. I just get smelly old letters. The letters are the letters Grandpa sent her from Korea. The last one on top is from the 24th of October, 1950. He must have been already dead when she got it. Kind of spooky like I reckon. It's very short and he just says, Dear Glad, thanks for your letter. Tomorrow is a biggish day. We'll write when it's over. Mosquitoes nasty as ever. Then there's some blah blah squishy stuff. And he signs off once and I suppose forever. He never writes to me no more. My mum lost it yesterday when Grandma said that for the trillionth time. She burst into tears and said she hated seeing her mum like this. Then she shouted at Grandma, He's dead! Don't you get it? Dead, 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 dead! I thought the word sounded kind of funny. It sounded weird, repeated like that. It goes funny as if you're not sure what it means anymore. But no one else was laughing. Everyone else was shouting and crying at once. Even that hard nurse with the tattoo. And my grandma was in floods because grandpa had died again. I didn't know what to do. It was hard. So, and I know you'll think it's really weird what I'm going to tell you. But anyway, let's get it over with and you can think whatever you like. You see, last night I sat down and wrote a letter. Never written one before except at school. And not even at school, a love letter. They don't teach you that in year five. 
I nicked one of the old letters from the biscuit tin, and I did my best to copy Grandpa's ancient style of writing, squiggly T's and spidery bits. It was dead hard and took ages, I tell you. Then I folded it up in an envelope, got a stamp from my mum's purse, and addressed it to Grandma in the home. I didn't write Grandma on it. I put Mrs Gladys Halewood plus the home's address. Then I shoved it in the pillar box down the street. Feel free to think I'm weird when you find out what it was about. Maybe I am. All I know is that when I went today, Grandma had stopped saying, he never writes me no more. Instead, she was smiling in a long time ago way, if you know what I mean. She, offered, she even offered me a rich tea, though still no cash. Anyway, here goes. What I wrote went a bit like this. Dear Glad, hello from Korea. I'm sorry I haven't written you for the last 55 years, <laughs> but I've been caught up with some stuff. <laughs> you know what wars are like. So sorry about that. But here I am again. Things are cool in Seoul. Wish you were here. I just wanted to say that I miss you truckloads. You're great and we'll see each other again very soon. With love and all that, Frank. Thank you very much.